Hey everyone, it's Xcarlife here. Today I would like to take the time and talk about optimizing World of Warcraft settings for better performance. I will walk you through the best in-game settings, share some handy console commands and even recommend a few add-ons to keep your game running smoothly. Now before we dive in, I do want to give a quick shout out to the LUI community. They have put together an incredibly written guide on optimizing your World of Warcraft settings and I highly recommend checking out their github wiki page. I have personally used it myself and it is one of the best resources out there. You can find the link down below in the video description to follow along. Now first things first, let us make sure that your monitor settings are dialed in. Head to the system menu and select your primary monitor for gameplay. For the display mode, always go with full screen window it, as this is the sweet spot between performance and convenience. Next, set your resolution to match your monitor's native resolution. If you are using a 1080p monitor, then that is 1920 by 1080 and if you are rocking a 2K monitor like me, you can adjust accordingly. Regarding the render scale, this setting holds a significant importance and intrigue because it can lead to a substantial FPS boost. Normally you should start at a render scale of 83% and slowly increase the slider to find your sweet spot. However, due to specific in-game bugs, it is recommended to use a render scale of 100%. VSync is also one that you should keep off unless you are dealing with screen tearing issues. If you've got a NVIDIA GPU, well then you have to enable the NVIDIA Reflex for low latency. If you don't have a NVIDIA GPU, you can just use the built-in low latency option. For the anti-aliasing, you can just turn it off completely as the visual difference is minimal and you will gain a bit more performance. Moving on to the base settings and these settings apply to your open world gameplay. Most of these should be set to low or disabled to maximize performance but there is one exception being the texture resolution. Keep this one at high as it makes a huge difference in visual quality without tanking your FPS. For spell density, set it to essential as this one reduces the clutter on your screen while still showing crucial effects like healing zones. Also make sure that the projected textures are enabled. Disabling this can make you miss important visuals like void zones or boss mechanics. Now let's tweak view distance, environmental detail and ground clutter. A good balance for these is a 5 for view distance, 3 for environmental detail and 3 for ground clutter. Now here is what these settings do. If we set the view distance to 1, you will see a reduction in the visible distance and the mountains in front of us, which will be no longer visible. Gradually increasing the view distance, you will notice that each increment the distance becomes more expensive. Now applying a similar approach to the environment detail, initiating at 1 reveals a noticeable impact on items like plants, trees and small details such as stones that begin to disappear. Incrementally raising the environmental detail one by one will basically result in a gradual reappearance of these finer elements like trees and stones. And lastly, let us address the ground clutter itself and to illustrate it is helpful to begin by setting the ground clutter to its maximum value and then gradually decreasing the number. As you decrease the ground clutter, you will notice that items such as grass and flowers progressively vanish with each reduction. Now that we have covered the base settings, let us now move over to the weight and battleground settings because that is where performance matters most. Scroll up in the settings menu and enable the check mark for weight graphics quality to apply your adjustments in group content. Here we want to prioritize performance even more. 
set shadows and liquid detail to their lowest values because water and lightning effects aren't critical in rates. Lower the particle density to low and disable depth effects and commute effects. Keep outline mode and texture resolution at high and leave your projected textures enabled. You can safely reduce the view distance, environmental detail and your ground clutter to their lowest values here because they don't add much in group content. Now let us dive into the advanced settings. Feel free to pause the video here if you need to catch up. Disable the ray traced shadows and set your ambient occlusion type to Fidelity FX Cacao. An essential setting here is the resample quality which should be set to Fidelity Super Resolution 1. This setting plays a crucial role as it employs upscaling technology to enhance graphics when using a lower render scale. However, since the recommended render scale is 100%, this setting will not become active unless you are using the always sharpen console command which we will get into into in just a moment. Regarding the max foreground FPS and the target FPS, it is advised to disable these in game. If you wish to limit your FPS, it is preferable to manage it through your driver's control panel. As for the background FPS, I have set mine to 60 FPS, but the default of 30 FPS is also acceptable, as this setting is just a matter of personal preference and only applies when you are tapped out of the game. Finally, for the resample sharpness, ensure that it has been set to zero as it works in tandem with the upscale technology. An incorrect value here may result in a blurry screen. Now in addition to the settings that we have covered, there are also console commands that you can use in game to further optimize your performance. For example, you can open your chat window and type forward slash console rate water detail 0 which will disable water details during raid encounters. Next, in your chat window, enter the console command forward slash console rate weather density 0 to disable the density of the weather as the command suggests. Now earlier into the video I talked about the upscaling technology Fidelity Super Resolution which is only active when using a render scale below 100% or when using the always sharpen console command. The always sharpen console command makes your game look more crisp and sharp compared to when having it disabled. If you want to use this console command, I highly recommend creating a macro with the script that you can find in the video description. You simply drag the macro to your action bar to either enable or disable the always sharpen console command. However, I prefer having it enabled to have a more crisp feeling of the game. And lastly, there is also a console command to deactivate your CPU and memory profiling as it can impact your performance. This technique assists Blizzard in identifying bottlenecks and inefficiencies and memory related issues in their code. To disable this feature, open your chat window and enter forward slash console script profile 0 and after inputting these console commands, be sure that you also execute an interface reload by typing forward slash reload in your chat window. This step will guarantee that the newly applied settings will also be applied. In case you are not aware, there are also a plenty of add-ons out there that can help you out with the game's performance. One of them is the Advanced Interface Options, which is an add-on that gives you access to hidden interface options and provides a way to browse every CVAR setting in the game, and I highly recommend searching for the CVAR card a world preload non-critical and set the value to zero and reload your interface. Disabling this one will speed up the zone loading times so it is worth trying out. 
to address those annoying Lua errors that will always have an impact on your performance, it is advised to install two add-ons called BugSec and BugGrabber. BugGrabber will catch all your Lua errors and consolidate them into a minimap icon which you can open. If the icon is green, it means that it hasn't found any Lua errors and you are fine. If the icon turns red, however, you can click on it and it will display a list of errors that you can share with the add-on authors to address the code and fix it. Another handy add-on that I use myself is called Simple Add-on Manager, which allows you to create different add-on profiles. For example, I have made profiles for general gameplay, dungeons, raids and gold farming. You can enable or disable add-ons to load in for each profile, which is huge because when you are raiding, for example, I don't need add-ons such as gold farming add-ons to load in, as that is having a huge huge impact on the game's performance, so therefore I have made a profile for raiding which only loads my add-ons used for raiding and it disables all of the other add-ons, therefore increasing the game's performance. And talking about add-on performance, there are some tweaks to be made to the add-ons called Details, Plater Nameplates and LVI which has been found by Lucky1, a member of the LVI community. Basically, some add-ons come with a huge update rate on their animations, bars, icons and text. Some of them are updating in real time which has a huge impact on your game. So for the details damage meter, type forward slash details options in your chat window and go to display update interval and change the value to 0.50. For Plater nameplates, type forward slash Plater, go to the advanced tab and change the update interval to 0.33. And lastly, for LVI, type forward slash LVI in your chat window, go to the general tab and change the tag update rate to 0.33. With the patch 11.1, .1, Blizzard has added a handy new feature, the Game Menu Tooltip. Hover over the Game Menu button and you will see your add-on CPU usage and your add-on memory. This info, previously only available through the add-ons like uh, add-on usage, will help you to identify performance hogging add-ons. Before we dive deeper into the details, I do want to give a shout out to my friend Lego Lando, the developer of the amazing Angler fishing add-on. He has not only created one of the best fishing add-ons out there, but also shared some incredible insights into how add-ons can impact performance. A lot of what I'm about to explain comes from his expertise, so a huge thanks to him. Now let us break this down a little bit further. First we have the CPU usage. If you have ever imported WeekRS from the Wago.io website, you might have seen a warning in the code review section. Blizzard allows add-ons to run custom code every frame using the onUpdate widget script handler. Now the problem with that is that if it happens way too often and without proper throttling, it can cause severe CPU spikes and frame drops. Well, this isn't the only reason for CPU spikes, it is a very common one. Even well-maintained add-ons like the Trade Skill Master, which is developed by a professional team, can sometimes cause performance issues. This just goes to show how complex add-on development can be. That's also why this new tool is so useful, it basically helps you to pinpoint the culprit and report it back to the developer. If you have ever experienced sudden frame drops or lag, this feature makes it much easier to identify the problematic add-on and provide detailed feedback to the creator. Now let's talk about the memory leaks. Lua, the language WoW add-ons are written in, has an automatic garbage collector. If you watch the add-on memory section in the game menu tooltip, you will notice that the memory usage fluctuates as the garbage collector does its job. However, memory leaks can still happen, especially with frames. 
Frames are essential for most add-on functionality, but once they are created, they stay in memory until you reload your interface. Poorly optimized add-ons might create new frames repeatedly instead of reusing them, leading to memory buildup over time. This isn't as noticeable as the CPU spikes, but if you play for hours without reloading, it can basically uh, crash or slow down your game. Since these issues don't show up as Lua errors, this new tool is a lifesaver for both players and the developers. And that's it my friends, with these tweaks your game should run smoother than ever. If you found this guide helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more World of Warcraft content and drop a comment with your thoughts or questions. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you so much for your support, it means the world to me and helps keep this channel going. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.